Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now, we might be getting a little bit of deja vu going on. We still have a strong storm coming to the West Coast, still bringing heavy flooding and intense winds. Plus, we could have another system popping up on the East Coast at the same time. Once again, potential two storms at the same time, maybe even another nor'easter. But first, we have this severe weather that will be popping up very soon that we need to discuss. So if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along, and I will give you as much information as I can so you can prepare for anything coming your way. Thank you so much for your time. Let's get into the video. Now, first of all, power outages has gone up, especially for California, over 193,000 without power. Plus you have Texas, you have New Hampshire, you have Maine, New York, Massachusetts, a lot of power outages still up here in the Northeast from that Nor'easter and it is slowly starting to come back. And you can see when I refresh, the power outages in Texas was already fixed. Now they're down to 2,600. You gotta be at least 10,000 to be in the yellow. So that's gotten fixed, but there could be more coming with this severe weather, but California is still 193,000 without power. And most of it is right here for Santa Clara. 89,000 just in Santa Clara is without power. 41 in San Mateo. So there's a lot of power outages going on for Central California right along the coast. And when you look at your tropical pause whip and atmosphere, you can see with your dynamics that we still have this cold air coming. We have an Arctic blast. It's going to be Arctic temperatures for the upper Midwest, polar temperatures going all the way down to the south, which is a little bit milder. But all the way from the 18th and the 19th, you still get a deep dip of cold air coming down, and the snow potential looks like it will be mainly for Texas as it goes through the 20th and going up on the 21st. So we do have cold air coming through, and at the same time, we have that next atmospheric river from a strong storm coming in. A strong system is going to come in right around Washington and Oregon, but all the precip right below it is just going to trail right through California. And there is a big outlook for it. You can see it best here. So as you go into the 20th, you get a surface low forming up right over Oregon, but you get all this precipitation that just trains through California for 24 hours, then a little bit of Southern California, and maybe another one coming after that. So we do need to keep our eyes open for that and weather prediction center has updated the amounts so not only do you see you have a big slight risk a moderate risk and still a high risk for heavy precipitation coming on march 22nd you can also see for the southeast and the east coast from the 22nd through the 25th heavy precipitation coming y'all way as well but you can see here from your precipitate water that as you go towards the 20th, as we get that surface low up here, it brings all this precipitation towards California around Monday afternoon, all the way around 3 and 4 p.m. And it sticks around for quite some time. It starts moving to Southern California as you go to Tuesday at 7 p.m. So there's going to be a lot of rainfall still coming your way from this next river. And then when you go all the way to the 23rd, after it makes its full run, you can see heavy precipitation along the West Coast, especially the higher elevations. You even get some purple in there. It was indicative to anywhere from 10 to 11 inches. It's showing 12 inches here, as well as for the Southeast and the mid leg, bringing you anywhere from 2 to 4 inches of rainfall just like the diagram I just showed you. And so far, the heaviness will be Alabama, Georgia, and upstate South Carolina, western North Carolina. A big pocket for heavy rainfall coming your way. And it is bringing rain towards Washington, Oregon as well, but you can see northern California, southern California, and the higher elevations of California is going to get the heaviest impact from this next river. And you can see a little closer here, a little bit of three to five inches of precipitation. Northern California, also for Southern, somewhere around three to four coming. But the higher elevations, all that brown is all seven to eight inches of precipitation. And then that dot of purple for the Southern Sierra, this is all the way from 10 to 11. It's showing a little over 11 as well. That's a lot of rainfall that could turn into a lot of snow as well. 
and you can see the full impacts here from Weather Prediction Center. So not only do you have the heavy snow in the higher elevations, this is from the 22nd, you have the heavy precipitation in all the green for all of California, but you also have the high winds in this brown, and this black striped lines here is a chance for flooding possible. And that is pretty rare that we see this too often. This is a big area getting into Nevada. A lot of flooding coming potentially with this next system. And the heaviest of the snowfall. You can see you can get a lot of major snow for Northern California as well. But the higher Sierras, you can see you get inches, even feet. You still get 98 inches. That would be another 8 feet of snowfall coming down. But as this comes in all the way to the 25th, it stretches all the way out towards Texas with a slight risk for high winds. But the winds for West Coast, for Oregon and Washington, even into Nevada, you have a moderate level on the 22nd when that system comes in. Some high winds coming your way. And when you look at the upper level winds, you can see that it just streams right in on Monday when you started getting all that heavy rainfall as well. And the winds stay there all Monday and Monday afternoon. Then we get another round on Wednesday, even further down California. Some high winds coming your way for sure with this next river as we get that next system forming up right off the east coast potentially another nor'easter but first you can see as we go into tomorrow and friday is bringing a lot of severe weather to the south and still some snow for the upper midwest where everybody else is going to be getting storms as this moves across now, when you look at the model data, the most important ones is the 0Z and the 12Z. That's where you get the balloon data that are most accurate. And when you look at the Euro and you go to Monday, you can see right off the coast on the 12Z that it showed not only all the snowfall coming in for Texas as you go through Monday, and it's showing a good bit of snow. It could form up a strong surface low right over the southeast and go right up the east coast again bring in another potential strong nor'easter. And look how tight these isobars are. This is going to be another big wind event. But let's take that with a grain of salt till we get a little bit closer because we do have chances for tornadoes, very large hail, and some damaging winds coming Thursday and Friday. So for Thursday, it has grown. You have an enhanced section now. Your enhanced section is going to be for winds, 30% chance for very high winds, and hail right here which is black is indicative to very large hail so the hail is going to be all over texas including the 30 percent same area as you go into thursday but we do have our chance for tornadoes we still have a two percent and a five percent chance for tornadoes for thursday and here's just cities and states all of it being in texas but you can clearly see it does go into louisiana it goes into arkansas and it goes into oklahoma now, National Weather Service has as scattered severe thunderstorms capable of producing large hail, damaging winds, and a few tornadoes appear likely Thursday into Thursday night across parts of the Southern Plains, Arklatex, and Lower Mississippi Valley. Some of the hail could be very large over South Central Oklahoma and North Central Texas. And this isn't large, guys. This is very large. So expect some big hail out of this storm. Plus, as we go into Friday, it has ramped up again. We have another 5% and a 15% chance for severe weather. And you can see your cities and states down here, and mostly they have Louisiana in the 15%. But clearly, it's going into Mississippi, southern Alabama, and the panhandle of Florida. Now, this is at the end of the run of the severe weather. It is pushing into the Gulf, but National Weather Service has isolated the scattered severe thunderstorms that may occur Friday across parts of the central Gulf Coast states. Damaging winds should be the main threat, but a tornado or two also appear possible. And you can see with your lightning strikes, as you go into Thursday, it really booms up with a lot of lightning. And like I said before, this white is at max on the scale. So this is where you're going to get your large hail, your very large hail, as you go in through Texas, as you go through Thursday afternoon. But later in Thursday is where it really strikes up big again. You get these big spikes of bright white covering a lot of area. This is where you're going to have your large hail. Overnight Thursday into Friday morning still for southern Texas. Chances for large hail coming with that system. Then as you go into Friday, you can see the lightning strikes goes towards Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and it hangs around the edge of the Gulf states. None of it is as severe as Texas is going to get. But these cells that form up Thursday are looking pretty nasty cells, guys. You get a lot of strong cells pushing all the way through Texas, and you are getting some rotation with height. 
could easily spin up a tornado, get a lot of supercells. But you can see there is some curvature in these beans as they pass by. And this one right here has a lot of precipitation in them. So we definitely need to watch out for tornadoes as this comes by. Look at these bean shapes that's passing through Texas, including Oklahoma. I see Oklahoma getting a lot of strong cells as well. Now we only see so far with HRRR, it only shows the next 48 hours. So I will do an update, but you do see how these cells goes towards northern Louisiana and we get a big nasty line that goes through Arkansas. So this is going to be a strong event for Thursday. And when we look at our helicity tracks, which shows us vorticity could be a strong thunderstorm or even a potential tornado. You can see right around 5 p.m. on Thursday, it starts putting some big tracks for northern Texas, including Oklahoma. Chances for strong storms, but good chance for a tornado, guys. As it goes all even along, and then as you go through the night and overnight, it pushes further down Texas and it goes into Louisiana. But that's as far as we can see with HRRR. You can see the difference with the NAM. That's why I always use RRR. NAM always is different information than what HRRR finds. So I will update this again tomorrow morning when we have HRRR and more information. But you can see obviously the change. You can see how it brings all the below average temperatures to the upper Midwest. Now this is gonna be really cold temperatures for the upper Midwest, but once again, we're in March. This is normal temperatures across the Northern tier, including the Northeast. We're still in March, so you can still expect cold temperatures. But down here from Northern Mexico, the Four Corners, especially New Mexico and Texas, you're gonna be below average as you go through Saturday, and Sunday, you see how it just blows up right here for New Mexico and Texas. It's not all the way across anymore. So it has mild it down. You still have some temperatures coming through, but you can see how much more it has mild it down. That's why I said a while back, Texas looks like it has the best chance to get this snowfall because it's just going to be really warm, especially with that Gulf moisture coming up. Then it moves away. So you can see how much it has weakened. Now these temperatures are gonna play a little trick on us, guys. You see we're going into that positive pattern, and then we're going into the negative pattern on the Pacific North American pattern. Now I don't wanna confuse you with that lingo, but what it means when you have a positive Pacific North American pattern, you get the warmer temperatures, you get the high pressure buildup on the West Coast, and they get these cool fronts coming across from the center to the East Coast. But when you go to a negative pattern, that's when you get the warm up on the center to the East Coast, and it goes back to the West Coast with this cold air anomalies that come through. But I don't see this lasting super long. I see the Northern tier of the US possibly staying in cold temperatures all the way through April. But you can see here from the Euro, as you go into the 18th, it starts bringing cold temperatures to upper Midwest. As you go all the way to the 19th, it comes even deeper to the South. Now that's not your coldest day. Your coldest day is still gonna be around the 20th for the coldest temperatures coming down to the deep South. But once you get to the 21st, it starts slacking up just a little bit. Then it slowly starts moving away. But the COVID's temperature so far going all the way to the south is going to be by the 20th. Coming all the way down towards northern Mexico, bringing a lot of single digits and teen temperatures for the higher elevations in the mountains, also the upper Midwest. Everybody else across the center of the U.S., Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, you're going to be waking up with teens and 20s. All the way down to the upper half of the deep south, you're going to be waking up in the high 20s, as well as western Texas. This is where your best chance for your snowfall to be. But it is going to feel very cold because with the wind chills, now you talk about negative 5, negative 10 degree wind chills for the upper Midwest, as well as the mountains in the higher elevations. Maybe even getting up to negative 15 to negative 20 degree wind chills. Why it makes you feel all the way in the south and the southeast, make everyone feel like you're anywhere from the high teens to 20 degree temperatures all across the mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Make you feel like you're in some single digits for the New England and also for the 20s and teens for the Northeast and Ohio Valley. Very cold wind chills coming this way, especially for Monday. But as we go into Tuesday, we start going into that negative PNA pattern and we get cold temperatures on the west side of the U.S. while we get this warm up from the center to the east side of the U.S. So this pattern is going to flip, but it's not going to last long. You're going to get a few days of some warm temperatures all the way up to the center of the U.S. by Friday. 
but then it's going to come back down with some more cold air covering the northern tier of the U.S. And when you look at the long range of the Euro, your Pacific North American pattern, you can see how extreme it is. We're going from a positive straight to a negative, but the whole time through April, we're going to stay somewhat in a negative pattern. So that means as cold temperatures are going to stay longer along the West Coast and upper Midwest than it will in the South or the Central U.S. But still showing by multiple models, there still could be that southern snowfall, not only for what it's bringing for the West Coast, the four corners, including the Rocky Mountains, we still have that next storm bringing some snow to the upper half of the upper Midwest. Now, GFS is taking it to where it's not a lot of snow, maybe a little bit for the southeast. The southeast, I really don't see that happening. I've always said Texas had the best chance because the coldest air came to you the longest. But you can see the update with the Canadian. It is somewhat agreeing with the Euro that it could bring not only heavy snowfall for the four corners, New Mexico, Colorado getting the heaviest, but also northern Mexico and getting into Texas. Now, Canadian shows it could be western DFW could see some snow out of this. But the Euro shows that that is going to be light amounts. As a matter of fact, I see maybe some mix could be happening. But still, Euro is taking it for the four corners, New Mexico, Arizona. Also for Colorado, higher elevations, a lot of heavy snow. And western Texas getting the most out of that potential snowstorm. Matter of fact, when you look at the ensembles from the Euro, you can see a lot of these ensembles is showing that Texas has a great chance for getting this snowfall. Most of them is showing it will be western Texas. But all of these are showing that some kind of snowfall is coming not only for New Mexico, but definitely for Texas, guys. And when I look towards the southeast, there's only one or two that shows it might be something somewhat coming towards the south. But Euro is just showing that that is just not possible, guys. Now, remember, we are giving away another solar weather station for tomorrow. We do have our winner for today. We do this every other day. So let's pick our winner for today. Jeff Bergstrom, congratulations. You are the winner of the solar weather station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can get this out to you as soon as possible weatherman you can't be no simpler than that thank you so much for your support jeff god bless you and your family i do hope you do like it brother and remember we do have another one to give away for tomorrow i have a bunch of these guys but most of all thank you for your time that i value the most i've been doing this for a long time and i always value your time as a parent i know how busy we can get through the day so thank you so much for your time i just want to make a quick update let you know what the updates were until we get closer there's no use talking about the seriousness of the impacts until we know what they are guys still a little too far to be exact but i will keep you updated the main thing that we have first will be this severe weather threat so i will update that first thing in the morning god bless all of you may you have a very blessed wednesday out there and i want to speak to you a little bit of ephesians 2 4 through 9 but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Amen. But God has not forgotten us. But there's nothing we can do is my point. It is all given by the grace of God that we are saved. There's no works you can do to get yourself into heaven. That is a fact. Thank you all again. God bless you. May you have a very blessed day today. And remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And may he always guide you, give you wisdom, and most of all, always keeps peace in your home and especially in your hearts. And remember, that's the most important part is your heart because what comes out your mouth is what defiles us and what comes out your mouth comes from the heart. So bless you all. Thank you again for your time. And may you all have peace from God. <laughs>
Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Have a very great day, everybody.